out there in Twitch and D&D land, welcome back to part two of the Sunday campaign. Now, I just dropped a, well, pretty interesting announcement. Uh, I am going to be starting and sponsoring my first cast-based show, and it's going to be built out of my universe, my homebrew. We might have a different DM, we might have multiple different individuals. Uh... We're trying to get a little bit of traction. If you're interested in this, it is a paid opportunity for other content creators in the D&D and tabletop scene. Uh, I found out recently that there are people who are, well, way bigger on the internet making content who aren't being paid. Um, and I understand if you're doing this for friends and everything like that, that's perfectly fine. But personally, I believe always pay your creators and pay them fairly and equally. Um, but yes, if you are interested in that, there will be a link in the description below. If you're watching right now, use the command exclamation point announcement. It will link you to the tweet automatically and you can just go over there, put in your applications, ask any questions you want, please. This is going to be a community building event and I am trying to bring tabletop entertainment to the forefronts of Twitch if we can help that of course but that'll be everything for my announcements oh yeah gamer beans they're great i got an affiliate link click it get yourself some beans <coughs> so silrin you said you wanted to try something all right so uh I, I purchased what i needed to so i don't need to play nice or whatever the hell that was or like i was doing um and you said they were right outside the door correct they, well, were. they were. Yes. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Um, well, first, I'm going to gonna try something. Is When I'm out the door, I like to wild shape into a, let's, let's say a wolf or maybe a dog, something with a good sense of smell. Sure, sure, sure. And I'd like to see if I can pick up a scent, just see if there's any residual scent from where they were standing that, I, that stands out. Roll an investigation, please. I'll allow you to have advantage because of your keen sense. Uh, should, I, should I just roll for my character sheet, or because I don't have dog? Uh, you yeah. have Super Fang. Ah, oh, oh, yeah, I use him. Her. Let's see, do 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 do. Investigation, intelligence, then, right? Mm-hmm. Advantage, though. Yeah. So nineteen. Nineteen. Their check was a little too good for a 19 to pick up. You smell a multitude of different animals and people that have walked through this area. It's a very well-trafficked portion of town. Uh, so it's kind of hard to really distinguish one that's different from the others. And even as you're, like, you're starting to sniff up the wall, uh, there's one of the guards who comes over and starts shooing you away with their with the, uh, the butt of their halberd like hey get away from there shoot shoot are they about to kick a dog no they're pushing you off the building because it looks like you're a stray in the middle of the streets trying to piss on a building ah that's fair <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah um like, secondary question when i did check and see and i saw that tile fall did it look like they were in like a rush to get away like they were like getting the fuck out of there or they were being carefully like they were careful. being very careful okay all right. Yeah, in All that right. case, I'm going to so yeah, find some private wild shape. Well, you know, get back to normal uh, and head back to my party. All righty. Party! Silren's been gone for a couple of hours. Y'all doing anything? Eating. Eating. Drinking. Yeah, just hanging out at a tavern or something. All righty. Playing fetch with Sir Super Fang. Gorzin is snooping. Hmm. All right, all right. So, while this is happening, you all do notice a couple of individuals who are becoming a bit more familiar to all of you. Um, there's the gnome individual that all of you met previously who rode in on top of an ogre. Um, there's a couple of other people, humans, half-elves, elves, that have all applied during your run who are inside of, you know, the general commons area hanging out with one another. Um, notably, uh, Kuma and Mary, you see somebody who's a bit of a celebrity here walk in. Ooh. Hmm. Right, who's that? Uh, Pax... Elfin is their name. Let me type it out for you. Pax Elfin. Oh, sorry, that's a PH. 
that? Hmm. And what is he a celebrity for? <laughs> if you can say that. Uh, Pax is the person who first introduced the augmentation system oh. to the Slayers. Hmm. Human, elf? Uh, they appear human, but a bit more beautiful in that regard. Uh, and they have the darker Marquesian skin about them as well. Uh, pretty shaven sides of their head with uh, thicker looking hair that's kind of always kept in a loose rubber band like tie to keep it all squished into one area as they seem to be walking through uh, you know sitting down at one of the tables by themselves opening up a book and just eating and reading um ooh uh Jimmy yeah. Jimmy hey what's up um you see that guy over there? Um, his name is, if I'm correct, it's that is Pax Ilfan. He's the um, he's actually the one who introduced that, you know, that augment system, the the way of using augments and stuff like that. He's the one who showed the slayers how to do it. You could probably pick up a thing or two from him if you. I thought I thought that was you, Kuma. You're talking Hello? to Mary. Yeah, and I'm also with the party. And oh I yeah, yeah, yeah. Kuma gotcha. is right there. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm the one they mainly go to for uh, for skinning a lot of beasts now. Did did he teach you, or I thought you didn't? No, we learned it from the well, our superiors in the Atlantic. Oh. Uh, improvements, improvements. You know how it is. Do, do hey, you... Pax, do you want a free drink? Pax looks over at the uh, group of you. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, come sit down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, they pick up their book, their tray, walk over to your table, put it down, and notice that they kind of placed it way too close to one of you and scoots it a little bit, places their book down, uh, takes out their napkin, folds it into a triangle, starts moving everything around very, very meticulously. I I extend my hand, and my name is uh, Amaryllis von Pontifex. Very nice to meet you. Oh, uh, Amaryllis von Pontifex. Um, yes. Uh, they put on a glove and shake your hand and then remove the gl glove and place it on <laughs> the side of them. Right. Um, my friend Jimmy here, he's uh, a bit of a Tinkerer, I guess you could say, and oh, if I'm not mistaken, you are a bit of a you're the one who taught the slayers that uh, augment. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was just something I kind of uh, well, luckily stumbled upon. Um, yeah, all right, well, uh, what do you want to drink? I'll go and get us some. Oh, I like water. Oh, okay, yes, um, I'm, I'm heading over to the barkeep and. Yeah, just getting a glass of water, a mug of water for him. Okay. <laughs> right, here you are. <clears throat> um, Mr. Pax, was it? Did you did you um happen to have any any of those uh augment things? Oh, um uh, well, uh you see I make them. I'm just not very good at killing. Um, so I, I have some, but they're kind of on layaway for people who wish to have them. Um, what, do do you um like the 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 process? Is it something that you've like? Is it a concrete way that you've come up with where where it always works? Because. It, it, oh. And Jimmy like reaches into his bag and pulls out a series of thick binders and he like flips one open on the table. Th this is what I've started with, but I'm not sure that the process is foolproof. It seems to have like a lot of variables um, with the transference of the properties. It, I, yes, um, I, I have figured out a way to uh, uh, make it more consistent, um, but I... Hmm. 
I can't pinpoint it. Uh, uh, the entire process was finding the magical essence that belongs inside of creatures and dissecting them and bringing them into their natural concordance with uh, nature and magic as a whole, and then reshaping and binding it into its own natural state. However, discerning exactly the quality of magic that comes out of an individual, um, as well as the quality and purity of the gems, is something that I have not been able to pinpoint uh, precisely quite yet. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, almost pulling an arcane divine. I, I don't know what other way to put it. It's like both. Magic it's both from inside of something that's living and it's so yes unique. yes i uh, can't believe i never thought about something like that before yes. well that's the thing all of us have a uh, magical uh, aptitude uh and possibility um there's something that stops us from doing it on uh um uh humanoids uh though yeah right I'm not sure what that is that stops us from doing it on humanoids. Um, I've tried, uh, sorry, uh, clarify. I used to belong to a coat. Um, I start pulling out the notes that I had with Mitch and putting them in front of him and leading the conversation that way. I've, I haven't quite come up with that solution, but this is something that I think is actually quite close. It at least like creates a conduit of sorts where it might be possible, but I haven't really, uh, what do you think? And I just like watch him super carefully, but I like try to step back for a moment and I'm just like holding my breath. All right, so he looks at your notes. Um, he goes, uh, may I? Touch them. Uh, here you go. And I put like a graphite pencil in front in front of him. Feel, feel free. I, I have copies. Uh, you can you can do whatever you want. He takes his bag, moves it over to the other side of him, uh, opens it up, finds a different pair of gloves that cover every inch of his hands and about right there on his wrist. Uh, then he finds a pair of glasses, situate them where you do notice there's a tiny augment right in the edge of it. Um, and he just looks at your notes and picks up the binder, flicks all the way through it, and then closes it. And just stares directly at you, Mary, with no form of comprehension in his face. Glasses of speed reading. Hello. He doesn't react. He doesn't move. He doesn't flinch. Nothing. Wait, he went through the entire book, Jera? He flicked through it in about one minute. And right now he's just staring at Mary. Okay, there, there's a lot more in than just the Mitch stuff. I don't know. Yeah, Not this is all. the book you've had since you started Jimmy, right? Uh, pretty much. Okay, he's going to be incapacitated for 10 minutes. <laughs> processing the information. He had a stroke. Oh, he has a keen mind. Um, but what exactly by, is in that? By the way, here, here's the list of notes of uh, Vorvik, <coughs> Mitch, Ayun, Teleportation. Oh my god, he's got so much I, in knowledge! You have, this is, this is, like... This is the group's now, contact now. He cannot be left by I'll himself. say this, Jero, I probably have, like, three of these notebooks. You know, there's only so much I can fit into one, but... Right, right. You know, there's Wait. pieces of all of that scattered Give me When you say you wrote about Ayun, what exactly did you write about Ayun? Everything. He takes really oh good notes. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so, as you're kind of looking at him and you're you're not sure if he's broken or not, um, <laughs> eventually... Oh! Wow! You all have done so many... That is... Did you read everything? Yeah, um, kind of, um, a little bit. Uh, it's a different experiment I've been working on. Um, oh, um, you think very low? Uh, that's fine. Uh, we're business, business, work. Um, yes, what's your understanding? And uh, you're okay that he's going to blurt all of this? No, no, I'm not even asking. He's going to blurt it all out right now. Um, he's like you in that matter. 
Um, so, uh, if you're trying to find a replacement vessel in order to uh, apparate a soul out of an individual, uh, I've actually had a theory that souls is actually the limitation as to why we are not able to create um, uh, solid um, augments out of uh, humanoids. Um, because a soul actually has a natural attunement uh, to Exandria herself. Uh, I don't know where that originates from, but you're not able to dissect it while it's still living. Uh, because, you know, Exandria is alive. Therefore, you cannot destroy an aspect of her in order to recreate her. Um, that's just at least my theory on the uh, layman aspect. But uh, what you're trying to do, uh, which is remove the soul from one vessel, uh, replacing it into another one. And oh my, you figured out how to make exact replicas of people. I, 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 maybe. I, I haven't done it yet. Um, no, you have well, it. It's here. I, I mean, I mean, theoretically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theoretically. You think it'll work? I mean, it should work. Yeah, I, it I did should. numbers. Um, I it just should. haven't tried it yet. If you did this, you could be immortal. Well, wait. Jimmy hasn't even thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this guy does. <laughs> you could what exactly is that in your binder, Jimmy? Um, oh, there is so much. Um, it's, it's what is your full name, sir? Um, I, 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 James, James Tiltover. Oh my goodness, you um, are, you're amazing. I, well, no, I j just the experience, and I take good notes and That's um. Just, it's a compliment, Jimmy. That is, I, I've, I have, I have spoken with leaders of, uh, I, I have spoken with the leaders of the Cerberus Assembly. I, I have, I have oh, interacted no. directly with the people in charge of every academy in Taldore and across Isliam and uh, Marquette and people have been seeking this knowledge. Well, you can have a copy if you want. I don't need it. I'll copy it down myself. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that'll work. You yes. mean what's in that book again? Everything. Um, like Find all of our all of our uh, stuff that we've come across for from like the arcane and and all of our encounters and you know Even all the, things the magic we were specifically that we've asked come across. not to write down. Uh, well, no, I don't think anybody asked. I mean, they, they, they took away the teleportation notes that I had originally, but Prissa got me another copy, so I, I kept those. Are your notes from Mitch and our time at the library and what you helped me with in that book? Yeah, that's like, well, there's a couple of them in there. I, I don't have, it's in my other notebook. Um, anyway, uh, Pax, it seems uh, we've uh, done you a bit of a favor, right? Oh, I... absolutely. This is all oh, amazing. So, uh, perhaps I can teleport you'd be there. Willing... Oh. Teleport there. Tell Te about where? Oh, uh, you have uh, two sigils in here. Um, I can go to either one of them now. Uh, I have one for Singorn and I have one for Iman. Oh, then okay, you have that's... a third one. Uh, third one? The one that Mitch oh, had. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was in there. He now has it. Okay, I'm going to tell you this right now. You are not allowed to go to any of those. <laughs> you will be killed on sight. Oh, well, that that seems counterproductive to... Uh, um... You don't have permission to be there. Yeah, a couple of those places they do like to but check. That's when is the Lyceum, correct? Um, I, I've been there as a guest speaker multiple times. Oh, okay. okay, you can go to that one. Okay. Because you know that one. Wow. So much information. No. So many. Hmm. Jimmy, we need to teach you how the CIA doctor thinks. Can I create a husk? Uh, I want to make a husk. What's a husk? Probably. Um, it is an exact replica of oneself or another individual that you are able to imbue with all of the systematic uh, natural connections that are necessary in order to imbue a soul into it. Wait, did you uh, ask Mitch kind of like a, it's like a body his... double, Mary? Yes, 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 yes. So like a copy with only with another soul. Well, it's not technically a soul. No, um, it, like, it is nothing without a soul. It is just flesh. Um, 
It does nothing. I mean, I'm sure you could animate it, but uh, I, I'm past necromancy. That's boring to me. Um, hmm. yes. Necromancy is boring to this person. Yeah. Can I insight that? Go for it. I mean, he also said that he's past it, so he's already had some experience with it in the past. Night. Uh, he straight up fucking said he used to be in a cult. Necromancy? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I, I was just curious, though, if you had any, um, like, additional notes for uh, augmenting things, too. I'll definitely um, try to uh, follow and in, in, in adhere to that system more more properly. Uh, no, no offense, Kuma, you're, you've uh, given me some great stuff. I, I just think um, you seem like you're very knowledgeable. I, I can, uh, I can, uh, he had, um flips open his uh that book you were reading willie roll me an arcana check since you can read through the pages and read any language yeah 17 um while the book was shut this is everything that you read through it um this is the application of soul rendering, augmentation, construction, and the theory, practical theory, as to why different creatures are susceptible while others are not uh, into creating them into augments, as well as a more refined manner of how to construct these augments better. It's mostly completely outside of your comprehension, but you, you learn these things, you just don't know how to apply it. Because your intelligence is not your spell casting. But he takes this notebook and uh, like hands it to you, Jimmy. Uh, this is everything I've been researching for the past um, uh, 16 months. Um, if you would like to read through it, uh, it might be able to help you readjust uh, how you construct augments if you are going to be making them in the first place. Yeah, um, I'll, I don't know how much time we have. Probably not that much. Um, uh, ouch, oh, take it with you. I can I can replicate it. It's no problem. Oh, we can take a bit of yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. I just okay. ask that you don't give this to evil people. Um, uh, but uh, how, uh, how... Oh, wait. Are, how are you how evil? Do you, how no, do you no. know? Oh, okay. How do you know if somebody is evil? I'm not even going to have him contest you, Mary. Um... <laughs> Oh, I I can promise I won't give it to anybody if that. That is good. That is good okay. enough. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I can do that. Uh, <sighs> Jimmy, if uh, what Doris is saying is uh, by his or our reactions alone, maybe you should ask Pax to restrict some of this as well. Hmm. Uh, well, I imagine Doris has been very animate about some of the stuff that's been saying. The kind of like what. Or just having like a panic attack. You've been writing this down. Yeah, no, I just I, so I imagine <laughs> things no, I just... you're not supposed to talk about. You wrote down twice. Well, you can forget things, Dorzen. Sometimes people make you forget things. It's better to write them down. I know. There's a reason why they make you forget things. Yeah, because they don't want you to know them, and that's that's oh, not. Oh, don't me. don't right. worry about the uh, stuff. I'm uh, good with her. Jimmy. Did you write down where that door was? Yes. I Back that out now. It's all not... the ink. Yeah, but I don't have the exact location. It's in this one. And he pulls out the other. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> may I? <laughs> Just... <laughs> yeah. He just smacks his hand. Ow. Hey, that is. Oh. oh. I, I'd say that some secrets are meant to be shared once in a while, right? <laughs> Who I mean, a little bit of, a little bit of gossip never hurt anyone. Oh, I don't. I mean, to be fair, uh, most people I talk to don't understand me. That's good. I think That'll it's my accent, alive. or it's the words I use. I think you're fairly comprehensible. Thank you. Uh, common is my second language. Co what? Common. Common. Okay. Yes. Yes. Second language. So I don't know how to ask this in character, but uh, Jimmy, did you write down the freaking architect that uh, uh, blueprints you saw when you transmogrified Dorzen into an Azimar? Yes, Jesus. They're oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much stuff. <laughs> uh, 
Q was like, uh, in Marquesian, like, let me guess, Marquesian's your first? Oh, yes, it is. It is a lovely, very beautiful language, isn't it? Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy just picks up the book that Doors and slapped to the floor, and I go, here. He didn't slap the floor. I slapped his hand from picking. Pick, oh, grabbing. well. I still uh, point the book over towards you. If you want to read it, Dorzen, you can go ahead. It's it's just, you know, it, it's important. It's valuable and, and very useful to, to everything that we're doing. Jimmy, and, you do realize how many people will try to kill you for what you've written down? Oh, people have been well, trying that, to kill me my I, entire life. It's fine. He pulls out that, a necklace of holy symbols. That's why I'm... <laughs> Jimmy, you like the guy from The Mummy? That <laughs> acts like... This. What are all those? Oh, all of these are the different holy symbols. Uh, I like to go look at different architectures, and when you have these, usually, for some reason, they just keep you safe. Who See, I have this Raven one. Queen he has it? an Ayun. Oh, yeah, he has uh, Raven Queen. He has Ayun. He has a couple that you don't even know what they are. Um, And he holds up the Ayun. See? If she didn't like me, she would hurt me, right? But no. I don't think that's how those work. But Dorzen, you can read the books if you want. I mean, I have multiple. I'm like, <coughs> I'm going to publish, you know, all of them eventually. But for now, I'm just trying to make sure that everything is sound. I have so, to make sure it's tested before, you know, I publish it. Pax, how how much do you want to see what's in that second binder there? Oh, I love to read. Uh, so would you be able to, I, I don't know. Uh, return the favor somehow if we let you have a look oh i wouldn't mind at all i like helping other people who are inquirers into the world oh, good and as you ask that question um sorry to do this to you but there is a very large dragonborn who walks up behind pax and goes no oh hey how are you today i'm great she's taking advantage of you no what? Oh, no, they, they'd be... Wait, are these bad people? No, they're stupid. Who Mary, are you? Mary, this is um, Pax's partner. Okay. Yes, uh, their name is Earl. They are a gray dragonborn that's roughly about six and a half feet tall. Dorsen gets up taller than him. It's like, okay, he just learned a lot of shit he shouldn't have, so he something needs to transpire. Now. He does that sometimes. But if you're looking to gain favors from him, I'm here to make sure he doesn't get taken advantage of. I mean, Fine. Talk to her. Already, Erlen. we've uh, we've g given him a favor by showing him these books, and he's said he's willing to return the favor. Oh, yeah, so... I gave them my journal. It's, it's nothing me. I mean, it's, it's a lot of information, but I think he can do something. He might be able to help us. Or pay me what I'm, what I'm suggesting is more of a like a cooperative sort of endeavor, I suppose. Oh, fine then. He sits down at the table. Then you're talking to me. Right. Uh, well, notably, I, Kuma, he does he does have a tail. Hmm. Hello. D and D lore. Your yeah. name. Your name is. Earl. Earl, nice to meet you. Good to meet you too. He sticks and his giant talons down towards you. What are you, the Earl of? I am Earl. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you can call me Queen then. Mary is your name. Queen Mary. Are you noble? Oh, well, I can be sometimes. In her imagination, she is. <laughs> Regardless, what is it you're trying to get my companion to do? Right, well, uh, Jimmy and uh, Pax here, they have certain academic, uh, well, interests. I'm, I for one, am, am, am of a more, shall we say, practical sort. I've asked Jimmy here before, um, I'm looking to... Well, I don't know if it's possible, but maybe Pax knows uh, if it's possible at all to sort of combine magical items in a way, maybe? In what regard? 
Uh, well, as if, say for example, if you have a boot, a pair of boots made by elves, and a cloak also made by elves, that sort of work together in a sense. If you, if it be possible at all to. Oh, of... you mean transferring two forms of magic into another third object in order to imbue them together? Uh, correct. Yes, something like that. He looks down. Hax looks up. May I answer? Yeah. Um, no. Uh, you see, the magical compatibility that is imbued into an item is mostly based off of the exact fabric and the weaving that is put into it. Uh, so when you imbue something with a very particular type of magic, such as the boots of elven kind, I assume they are, uh, they might be uh, other forms and qualities as well. Um, it actually needs to be seeped into a very specific line and texture in order to be able to fluidly produce the magic throughout all of it while maintaining it at a constant rate, unless you wish to disperse that, in which case it could be volatile, randomly explode, um, or disperse all of the magic in bursts instead of instantaneously and consistently. Jimmy, you understood what he said. A brother. <laughs> I think I got most of that. So yeah. you're saying you could you could potentially turn it into something that can be used temporarily over a small amount of time together? Uh, yes, but the magic would be dispersed almost immediately after constructing the item. So it would be a one-time use then. No, it would begin dispersing. Um, think of it um, as a uh, he pulls out a uh, large piece of uh, charcoal and just starts drawing on the table. Um, very nice tables, mind you. Uh, and he goes, uh, "Imagine you have this circle, right? This is the magic inside of the circle, right?" And you wish to weave magic, and he draws zigzags all the way around in order to produce a continuous loop. Correct? And he connects yes. the loops at the end while weaving through. But if you break the circle, the loop will just be minor illusions, and you watch the z swiggles like move out and disperse almost immediately. Right. Hmm. Yeah, that's. <coughs> Right, so it would work initially, but not for a long time. Though. Almost immediately it would be dispersed. Uh, that is why magic items are constructed in ma uh, manners that they were, so that the magic can be continuous, because there's a mage who has dedicated enough time into making sure that it will keep doing that. Yeah, usually, Mary, they explode. Oh, that's not good. No. <laughs> well, yes, magic is very volatile. Uh, you'd be surprised how many buildings... Well, I, I do have an idea. <laughs> Since it seems that, uh, based on Dorsen's reactions, that some of this knowledge that he has shouldn't be getting out, and you don't want other knowledge of yours getting out, how about into a partnership where you don't disperse each other's knowledge without each other's permission, and to known affiliates that we approve of until the time uh, <coughs> comes for, I guess, Jimmy to publish his work. Uh, I mean, I'm okay with you, uh, Mr. Pax, uh, doing doing what you will with the with the notes. Uh, I'm going to create a husk tomorrow, and and I I, I promise I won't give your notebook to anybody. Oh, um, thank you. And I'd hope you do the same with the uh, Jimmy's notebook. Oh, I have no need for it. I already memorized it. Hmm. We'll try not to go making a bunch of copies then. Only two. For, for Earl, too? Uh, I mean, I keep the second copies of all of their books. Safekeeping. That's a really good idea. I do, I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, thank you so much for buying me a drink. Um, I really do appreciate it. And it was such a nice pleasure. He takes off the gloves, puts on that other glove that's been seated on the table, and goes to shake your hand, Jimmy. It's such a nice pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you, too. Yes. Immediately removes the glove, bandages it up, puts it in a satchel, and puts on the other gloves again. Ah, wonderful. Well, I'm done eating. Um, goodbye. And they stand up and start walking away. Duma's gonna go get stand up and get a drink as well. Yeah, that was that was really. Thank you so much, Mary. That was, that was very helpful. What? Uh, you're welcome. What are the physical differences between Kuma and Earl? At a glance. Uh, 
Earl is slightly taller than you, broader shoulders. His head is more draconic in origin, which means it has the rippling uh, horns against it. Um, his snout is longer, significantly longer. Um, and the general body and physique is just wider and broader than yours. Hmm. Okay. But that's, I mean, there are tells that go, you're not a dragonborn. But now that a, a dragonborn and a lizard folk have sat next to each other, I hate that I'm doing this right now. Um, I would like... Mary and Dorzin. Oh, Mary knows. Dorzin, roll me a nature check. Um, nature check? Natural one. Mary, you're fully aware already that Kuma uh, okay. is a lizard folk. Does Jimmy want to cancel? I, I don't know what Dorzin's doing, so Jimmy wouldn't be natural one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you're like, okay, cool. Two dragonborns chilling together. <laughs> Can I get another one? Because I know what Tessa looked like. And they clearly are different from her. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> one to 20. <laughs> no in between. Thank you, roll 20. Um, now that you look at the two of them side by side, you kind of go, wait, you're not a dragonborn. You're not sure what lizard folk are because they are incredibly rare. Uh, they only live in one place in all of, Ex well, two, three places in all of Exandria uh, as communities. And unfortunately, you have not traversed many of the more uh, culturally open indi individuals or uh, places inside of Exandria. But you're like, you're, you're not, not a, a dragon mourn. <laughs> Earl just looks over at you, Dorson. I'm pointing to Kuma. Yeah, but he's looking at you. Looks at you, Kuma. Did he think you were a dragonborn? I don't know at this point. Uncultured fucks. Right? <laughs> and he just walks away. <laughs> hey, don't, don't bring all of us into this. <laughs> I mean... What what he thinks uh, is on him. We have a new Sir Yurik. <laughs> oh, don't you dare try to put that on me. I didn't, I didn't take you for a racist, Dorson. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a racist. Now I can see that I knew Tessa, I know him, and I know this guy. All three of them are different. I thought they were dragonborns. They're not, apparently. Then what am I? Hmm? I don't know. You tell me, because you're not that. I don't think I've ever met what you are. <laughs> or kobolds. I haven't met kobolds either. <laughs> well, maybe you should do some research and find out. Uh, I, I, you could I, always I, just tell him, Kuma. What are you saying, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah but we're in. Um, uh, I, I think, you know, based just off of the teeth alone, he's definitely not um, a dragonborn but uh i would have to actually get and he he's like leaning in super close to you kuma um he's like trying to look for ears and like all around your head but he can't really do it from three feet off the ground <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know so either but... you tell us or he starts dissecting you your choice <laughs> well, Jimmy, you like to research things. Why don't you try and research and find out? I, I definitely could. Um, yeah, I, I. It's actually. It might be fun. <laughs> Jimmy, out of curiosity, roll me a perception check. Oh, come on. <laughs> I know. I know. Here we go. Does Jimmy, with the rest of the party, notice what's about to happen? Holy! You were paying such acute attention to Pax that when he stopped talking and started talking to Kuma, they both shared a language. You were so enthralled with him, you're like, wait, they're speaking a different language. And you recall hearing this language because 
inside of uh, Vasselheim, there are quite a few individuals who have been moving up to this area and then going over to Taldore or vice versa. Uh, they were Marquisian in nature, which means you might have an air, a narrower perspective to research. I mean, I recognize at least the tone of it. That sounded, you're, you're not from this continent, are you? Uh. Well, we're off to a good start, Dorzen. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to think Dorsen is giving Kuba a deadpan look right now. Well, if he's not going to tell us, at least Mary. one of us should be honest here, I suppose. Mary. That's always let, been Let me. the fun happen, Mary. Mary. What? Yes. Fine. Listen, folk. <clears throat> Roll a performance check. Sorry? Can I mean that they has to roll low for them to realize that it was Can I dump my beer on her head? By the way, my natural twenty, I still don't know that Mary's even in the room. Yeah, no. (laughs) Can I dump my beer on her head? (laughs) Absolutely, I'll allow it. (laughs) Well Dorsen knows, but he's not gonna say it so Jimmy can have the fun of researching. You should have to do an insight check against my performance or something. Uh, I mean, he cannot say if he chooses, but Jimmy chooses. <laughs> I, I choose to believe anything Mary tells me. How does As that feel, Mary? Be. You have one ally. <laughs> <laughs> but I am the most important ally. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you saying Fang doesn't count? Ooh. True. Fang loves all of you equally. Well, yeah. no, that's a lie. Whoever has Percy the pig does. ears, he loves more for that instance. Or she loves more for that <laughs> instance. But anyways, Willie, you've been sitting here the entire time, like, w- w- watching all of this, like, wow. People just relax. This is new. I mean, I, I'm not quite sure what Willie would be saying right now. He was more looking at that book and then now just watching this unfold. Already? Much of a talk. <laughs> I'll say that entire interaction probably took enough time. That's Silver, and you're back. <sighs> Bang. I got you something. Takes out a pig ear and throws it to her. From underneath the table, she leaps off, kicking off of Mary's shoulder, and snags it in the air. Oh, boy! Oh. Piggies are so cute and yummy. Yes, yes, they are. And she's just going to start chewing and ripping into them. All right. I got what I was, what I needed. Uh, Everyone ready to go? Anything Mm. happen while I was away? No, nothing of import. I mean, you notice Mary uh, is soaked in beer. No, I used to have... Well, uh, that's that's nothing new. Only thing, only thing I wouldn't, I anything else I wouldn't be surprised about. Like I'm surprised she hasn't just blabbed on about like all our secrets already, or all things that we usually keep to ourselves. I, I never had any secrets from any of you. <laughs> Says the liar. All right, are we all good to go? Liar, liar, pants on fire. That's uh, the first uh, one who calls is the one who did it. Clever. And everyone's good to go. hands light up. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying, I Silrin? I that two doors in. Oh, no, I was... <laughs> Silrin's just basically ignoring Mary, just clever. Everyone good to go? Yeah, I'm really interested to find out how this plane thingy works, and Jimmy has his notebook out once again. Right. Uh, before we go, though, um, Pax... Oh, he already left. On. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't get that. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, uh, before we go, uh, hey Kuma, I can. I want to get a drink real quick. Uh, can I? I want to tell you something. Just come on. Yeah. Oh, cool, sir. Yeah. So yeah, so and gets himself a quick drink before they head out. Uh, maybe something a little harder than wine this time. Anybody's kind of going at a lower 
ca- he's tr- he's sounding casual, but it's a lower tone. Uh, Kuma. So when I was doing my shopping, someone was following me. I didn't get a good look at them, but they were larger than any of us, but smaller than, say, an ogre. I mm. uh, I scared them off after I called them out, but well, when we're in town again. Just be wary in case something like that happens again. Keep an eye. Make sure Mary and Fang or make sure nothing happens to them if they go off on their own in town. Yeah, I can do that. All right. Yeah, and then he finishes the drink, then heads back. All right. Uh, as you're finishing your drink, there is a mug of ale that just pours on top of Kuma's head. You look up and the mug just falls to the floor. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Well, how unspe- so unexpected. I'm, I'm glad you learned something, Jimmy. I think you'll buy a casket. <laughs> <real quick. laughs> no, they hey, don't I'm, allow I'm people at the Slayer's Take, take to have a cask of ale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was how the war began. <laughs> <laughs> two bugs. Two uh-huh. bugs of ale. <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> It's such a casual thing. Nobody even reacts as you're just dumping <laughs> ale on one another. They don't. E- they know. They know. <laughs> All right, I got my drink. I'm good to go. Uh, uh, okay, so I think we all have to hold hands. Why? Uh, you, can, you have to. Be- it's, you have to hold hands, or else you uh, you die. Uh, only eight of us can come, so uh, choose wisely, I guess. Well, there should well, be just eight of us, including Sir Super Fang and uh, your little buddy. Oh, I could. Oh, yeah, he has to stay with me. That's a good point. Okay, uh, let's try it. Uh, I'll, I'll whistle over for Sir Super Fang to come over. She looks over at you. Hi! Come here. Oh, okay. Uptime. Yay. Do yeah. I get cuddles? You will. Yes. Pick her up. Oh. You said, wait. You said Tundra, right? Uh, Tundras, I believe it's called. Uh, so and quickly gets out of his what? bag the, like the, kind of like, like the poncho, like the winter poncho kind of thing. Oh. And puts that on. All right, I'm good. You won't need that. Okay, everyone, hold hands. I'm gonna. Who am I standing next to? Jimmy. I guess I'm gonna hold. Oh, Jimmy and um, Lyrim's hand. Okay, do your do your thing, little guy. Alrighty, everybody, hands and feet inside of the circle at all times. I recommend that you tuck in your hair as well, and maybe close your eyes if you have some uh, travel sickness. Um, everybody, link hands together, hold on, and clack your heels together in unison. All right, get it going. Everybody, are you clacking your heels? Come on. Thorazin isn't, because he knows this trick. Uh, trying to. Someone knows the spell, so he's not doing it, because he knows it's not necessary. Sure, I'm, sure. I'm clacking, <laughs> clacking. All righty. <laughs> Mary, Kuma, are you clacking? I'm not clacking. <laughs> I'm wear boots, so there's something to clack. You can still clack your heels. You have heels. But yeah, so you all link hands, I assume. And plane shift. And you're heading to Tundras? Are you picking a particular location in Tundras you wish to travel to? Uh, as far away from the Devourer as possible. So... So Sounds in the middle pretty- of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. The Devourer, he says. Already. So eight willing creatures. That's a party of six plus Sir Superfang. So seven. Uh, plus the goblin thingy, Fay. So that's eight. Quasit. Yep. Because he has to do the spell for you. Um, and as all of you linked your hands together and some of you start clacking your heels, he. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, he pulls out a fork, puts it in his mouth, and go. Alrighty, let's. 
you all begin accelerating at a blinding pace through some other world and some other existence that you've never experienced previously. You shoot up into the sky, moving through the open air, the clouds, and breaking into a vast open landscape, engulfing everything around all of you. It's magnificent up here. It's dark, but you see the specks of light floating and coalescing around you as if those stars were almost close enough that you can touch them. And as you've shot up into this area, you then begin propelling as the fork readjusts and aligns, pushing you over towards the north. Wait. East, currently. As you immediately deviate and start shooting into that direction, you all watch as there are these magnificent creatures inside of this open landscape. Doors, and you recognize where you're at. You're inside of the sea, the astral sea, moving at this pace. It's incredible. And you look frantically trying to see if you can even get a glimpse of her just for a moment, but you've already moved too quickly past Exandria. And as you go flying over, you do see that there are other places in this open landscape that aren't too terribly far away from you. Dorzin, Mary, and Silrin, you three are the only ones with a possibility of this. Roll me a perception check. Ah, dang it. The amount of details that you have to look at as you are moving through this wide expanse of open area is mind-boggling. Unfortunately, none of you really discern anything of note. Uh, DC 30? No. 28. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, damn it. Mother. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy, flash that genius. Flash it. <laughs> you think he can pay attention to anything? No. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'm bending my luck point. Do it. it. Do it. You need a 19 or better. Ah. Unfortunate. Ah. Unfortunate. But as you go through this wide open expanse, you do see a plane, a material realm that has this cold exterior to it. But as soon as you collide with the boundaries of the outside, you immediately go swirling in circles around it, moving at a nauseating pace right now, before eventually you come across a single open area, a little tiny dish that's just barely large enough for any of you to fit through, and you one by one zipping in and whirling around. And as you do so, you land heavily into snow, but you don't feel anything. You feel the texture of snow. It doesn't melt as it touches your face. And you look around and you exhale, expecting to feel frigid and cold. But as you do so, there's nothing. You're surrounded by ice and the cold, but there's no sensation of temperature here. Uh, Jero, does it feel like that last, like the same thing that happened last time it when me and Dorzen feels exactly like it yes oh we're here again what have you been here before yes this with Dorzen oh I, I'm sorry no that's not something to be sorry for just didn't think that it was here <sighs> this is weird yep I think I understand now that when you mentioned before you'd been to a place with no temperature. Hey, uh, Jimmy. Did you try yeah. to figure out why the snow ain't cold? Um, it might not be snow. Uh, I'll do a nature check. Um, yes, nature check. Uh, <coughs> am I picking up anything from the ethereal plane? in this realm because of my rope. Oh. Oh. Let me consider that. Let me answer Jimmy first. That'll be easier. Uh, 25. Why does the snow not melt? It's easier. <laughs> so, this place is different, Jimmy. 
Um, you're aware that seasons, temperatures, things like that, those are all pretty normal. Where you're at, you have the same amount of production of heat and energy as the snow does, as if you both produce that same energy. And therefore, you're the same temperature. It won't melt. It's a very strange thing because either you're way too cold, it's way too warm, or the typical physics that you understand just don't apply here. There, there doesn't seem to be any, any transference of energy. Um, it's, it's weird. Hmm. So, Willie, uh, me and Dozen were here last time. Apparently, there, there's at one point a dragon that visited here. Any dangers we should be aware of while we're here? Um, well, Frigid's here, but he just ignores everybody. Um, Who? Our this god person thing. I don't know. It's just it's far off. And so his name is Frigid. Yes, I wait, think. Wait, no, what that one after that though? The, the one it'll you said the Frigid will ignore us. You said the Devourer is you. Yeah, shifted that, us to the same plane as a creature that oh. has, is a godlike and is known as the Devourer. Believe it or not, it's. I don't think they have any powers here. In fact, I don't think anything has power here. Uh, it can talk. It just gonna, you'll hear a whisper in the back of your head, and it will get louder and louder. But I usually leave before it starts to really bother me. How long do you tend to stay here? <sighs> Not too long. Days, maybe a week. But I don't think it's aware of us. I don't want it to be aware of us either. Unless you guys really want to go talk to them. I, Jero, it's frigid, uh, frigid to devour, and there was one more here, right? Yes. The old um, lady. Yeah, the old lady, and she's just creepy. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> she's the one who just doesn't want to talk to you ever. Positive. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm. Well, sh oh, I didn't say. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was trying not to interrupt them. Seems about right. I, yeah, I, that's five. You've never heard any stories about this place, probably. No, you haven't. Dorsen. Oh, do I need to do Fang as well? Uh, there's six of you. Technically but, eight. But yeah, Fang <laughs> as well. Okay. Harry. Miss and Willie. Oh, yeah, yeah, Willie. Oh, I got to do one. Oh yes. no. Uh, well, I mean, I. That that is what it is, but I did let you know, Joe, that the uh, wisdom mod was wrong on. Yeah, the yeah, sheet. yeah. Just edit the sheet. You have full access to it. So yeah, go ahead and roll it. yours, Willie. Fourteen. As you're standing around, Fang kind of curls up next to you, Silren. Don't like it here. Um. At the same time, Jimmy, you hear in your mind. So eat fear. Hello? Do you guys hear that? No one. I didn't hear anything. Wait, was that? Jimmy's trying to listen now and. Are you Wait. saying I succeeded with a nine on the save? Would, would I have known uh, he's saying this? Huh. Uh, Willie, you don't hear it, no? No, yeah. I mean, Jimmy's like, hey, did anyone hear that? Yeah, you, you would notice him saying that. Jimmy doesn't hide things. Jimmy, don't listen to whatever <laughs> at all. Or we gotta leave. Oh, okay. Um, it said, um, eat. Are, are we not supposed to eat here? It's just going to say eat and consume all day in abyssal until you... Well, no, it wasn't It wasn't in abyssal. I don't understand that. No, it's gone. I think we're good. <laughs> oh. And yes, Mary, a nine was a save. Hmm. Yeah. The, the uh, ethereal plane thing. Yes. 
The snow is clumpy. And... Roll me a perception check. Okay. Can I make a snowman real quick? Absolutely, you can. All right, cool. Advantage, Kuma? Yep. My robe gives it, so does my uh, glasses. <whistles> yeah. It's either going to be good or bad. All right. Making a snowman, and that snowman is going to speak. Do not eat. Do not consume. Willie says so. <laughs> oh. Can a snowman be forced to bend to your will if he doesn't have a soul? Uh, with magic yeah, magic, yes it can. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's magic mouth, just Jimmy flavored. So Kuma, as Jimmy is making the snowman, and you start looking at the snow in the open area, above you, there's nothing. Like, in absence of anything. Usually when you look into the ethereal realm, you can see your plane translated into it. This plane does not translate to the ethereal realm. However, the snow, every clump you look at has words on it. What do some of the words say? What languages do you understand? I understand. Post it. I won't remember if you just say it. The only language written that you can somewhat see are draconic ones. Now, to tell you how this will work, since you are able to just read it, every hour you spend investigating, you're going to have to roll a D1000, and I will have to dig out a different folder to give you information that you may understand. All right, I'll I'll spend the time here as we're on a plane uh, investigating it. Alrighty, I'm gonna send that all to you after the game because that'll just take up too much time. Who worried? Any of us about this? Nope. Um, um, okay. Quick question. Uh, but you will see him staring at stuff. So, what are you saying, Silver? Uh, someone would ask Fang because while well, he's holding her clothes, uh, what's wrong? I mean, I am always hungry, but that sounds really hungry. So, did it sound like it was in your head rather than physical? What's that mean? Can did things you... speak to me in my head? Sometimes. <gasps> did, did it, what it sounded like, did it sound like it was... So I can have people be friends with me all the time? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, sometimes. Oh, that is great. I'm going to go talk to it. No, no, no. <laughs> but why? We can be best friends. We need more friends. You said that a while ago. We need more friends. We need... You need to be careful who you make your friend. Because there's there are bad people out there. Or bad creatures that will take advantage of you. Bad or people. try to kill you. So we can't be friends with bad people? That depends. But for now, no, I'm saying no. Don't be friends with dad, bad people. Okay. And she like tucks her tail between her legs and kind of just curls up on the snow. Well, I mean, I'm holding her, so I, I assume... Yeah, she'll she'll, she'll she'll try to, like, separate to, like, curl up in the snow. You just reprimanded her. She doesn't take it very well. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's rare that you don't yell, but you use your serious voice. And she's still a pup. Yeah, that's fair. She learns, but it definitely upsets her. <sighs> so... You all will be spending eight hours here before you can teleport, Willy? Yeah. Eight hours. Let me get my calculator out. Uh-oh. This is where the fun begins. Oh, so. uh, before no, before we start that, fun. too, uh, 
So everyone's gonna turn to Mary. Mm -hmm. If anything bad happens to us on this plane, Mary, you encourage this. Well, I'm already used to you blaming me for everything, so uh, nothing new in that department. Well, I wouldn't have to if it wasn't your fault in that aspect. So when I wouldn't worry. I don't... Oh, I don't worry, Silver, and I don't think anything bad can happen on this plane. I don't think anything can happen other than words. Well, Willie, I'm going to hold you to that because that puppy heard something in her head and if anything happens to us or to that pup someone is going to pay a price <sighs> once again you have to forgive Here. forgive uh Siren here will you? he's um he's not a people person he doesn't really understand how to connect with others that's okay i've been here a while uh I'm not, and there's not really a lot of people to connect with here anyways. <laughs> well, he's going to look down again. Nor does he understand basic logic, but, oh, that's another. I understand it better than you, Mary. No, you don't. You know, Kuma's just looking around at things. Okay. Roll me your investigation check. Uh, how many? Uh, just one. It'll encompass the entire time, and that'll dictate which information you will have access to. All right. Investigation. Um, was it the session inspiration? Is it right? Sure, if you would like to. Yeah. I would do it on this. All right. 16. Noted. Again, I'll give you all of this information afterwards, but Kuma will have a very contemplative look about him but anyways is anybody doing anything during the long rest that you spend here I'm using uh, the well I guess no one's really wounded but I'll use uh, song of rest anyway so. nice little soothing tune it's odd despite the fact that you're in such a wide open canyon-esque block of ice it doesn't echo like it usually would the music just seems to emanate around all of you and that's it things don't move as far here but anyways eight hours go by you wake up willy and your little friend pulls on your Sleeve. All right, you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Uh, back to Alexandria. This time to Wildmount. What was the city? Can someone describe it to? I remember. I think. The one said. Okay. And uh, something the ice. Wait, what did you say it was, Thorson? I could have sworn you said the name. Of, it was near Uthadern or something. Yep, like that that was correct. Good. I was just making sure. Because if you used a different Dern, that could have been a really fun adventure. There's another Dern? There's multiple Derns. Uh-oh. So? <sighs> so, you bring everybody together. Jimmy, throughout the rest, you have heard that voice periodically say those same phrases and sentences make a new snowman each time i hear it ready you all are surrounded by about 10 to 15 snowmen i don't think the devourer is gonna <laughs> like these if he comes over here don't eat don't consume as told by willie <laughs> and they persist forever yeah, yeah, indefinitely. Mouth lasts so forever. If any what? creature comes within, I think it's a 60-foot range. 
on that we're one. gonna we're gonna eventually come back to the same spot one day and there's just gonna be a small tribe worshiping these snowmen <laughs> chanting the same don't things. don't eat don't consume 30 <laughs> feet within the object already Juro, make a note for anyone else who ever sh- poor sap send up here i'm there i'm there i got this yeah thank you <laughs> so as you all join hands once again and begin the next stretch of your journey. You swirl around again inside of this climate and go shooting, rocketing back towards your own planes, everybody. Moving at that blinding speed and pace. Yes, you all long rested. Eight hours. So, as you begin flying through, uh, Willy, roll me a d100. Oh no. Alright. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's not too bad. Oh, no, that's actually good enough, yeah. Um you go swirling through and then your little tiny familiar looks at you and as you're all moving at this blinding pace just looks back and goes, I forgot! We don't know exactly where that place is. That's fine. It always works out. Already. I would like all of you to give me deck saves. Uh, would my danger sense come into play? Oh, this? yeah, you see the mountain as you're pl- plummeting uh, towards it. Okay, can I use my session inspiration on this? Sure. I love how Fang rolled a nat 20 on that. Uh, I'm using my. Uh, oh, Fang doesn't have to roll for well. these things. I'm really not hurting glad Fang. I decided to use that. I will not hurt Fang willingly. Okay, like I'm okay. sorry if that ruins immersion for some people. No, puppy, no, that's good. fine. That's fine. Puppy, good. That puppy, being said, Can you make use of that nat twenty? Uh, for Fang, sure, I will. Um, is uh, you get inspiration for doing the recap as well? Yes, right? you do. All right. Not bad. Not bad. But that's only... Oh, no, it's up ahead. Somebody rolled their danger sense to... Okay. Yeah, um, Willie, did you use your inspiration? No. All right, so that's a seven on Willie. And you're the only one who failed. As all of you go plummeting down towards the earth at a blinding speed, you see, as you break through clouds, this magnificent mountain range filled with sharp, jagged edges and the snow-cropped peaks and as all of you go plummeting towards it most of you kind of like project your body do a tumble and roll and aim for soft snow as you (laughs) rumble through it apparently the magic ceased uh roughly about 80 feet above the ground um yeah you know minor miscalculation compared to what it could have been um (laughs) As you all go rolling across, getting slammed around, hitting into the mountains, and all getting thrown around uh, chaotically. Willie, you apparently just go, oh, everything always works out. Fuck. (laughs) Head first into a mountain. There's a a Willie crater. Willie can take the hit. I have faith. All right, Willie can actually take the hit. Um, 46 points of bludgeoning damage to Willy. Have to 23 to everybody else. Does evasion account to uh, Absolutely. To that? Yeah, right. it's a deck save. You manage to grab onto one tree limb, do a swing around, and land in the snow. Kind of like plummeting onto your butt, but then you throw your hands up and go, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing there graciously just... <sighs> <laughs> As you are all now, and I'm sorry for using the same map as before, but it is a frigid wasteland that you're inside of right now. Fang, 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 where'd you go? Fang goes plummeting towards you. Oh, boy! (laughs) Disappears into the snow. (laughs) Uh, I'll hunt for Fang. You walk over there and Fang pops out of the range and goes, oh, boy, that was so much fun. Wow. Wow. That was amazing. <laughs> Glad you had fun. Yeah. All of you, by the way, have no idea what Willie is actually capable of, and he just landed face first into a mountain. Not snow, a mountain. Um, Willie, you here? Anywhere? You dead? Okay. I heard a little. I'll be fine. 
Oh, so you're not dead. All right. No. Knock him up. Nose. A, lot, a little. I don't know. It hurts. Is that the way it's supposed to go? I just want to make sure for anything else. That's how it usually goes. <laughs> okay. Good Shockingly, Willy looks... Like, he's a little bruised, a little bumped up, but not that bad. That's... 46 points of damage? Okay. Yeah, 46 is not that bad to Willy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If that's the case, Kuma was just thinking like, oh, he's just going to die the easy breeze. Now he's actually going to look him over. Yeah. Look at a uh, current HP and uh, let's do con score. Con score. Okay. Uh, so current hit points, Willy, 135. Um, con score, Willy? Natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of health for someone who just did that kind of magic. Yeah, Kuma's was like... The he is sturdy as fuck. <laughs> He's just a little less sturdy than Kuma, and that's like, what the hell? <clears throat> is he, though? Remember, you were successful. You tumbled. He didn't. Yeah. Oh, he has that much left. Yeah, he has 135 left. You learned Holy current, shit. not total. What the hell? Total of 170 like health? <laughs> Silverin, roll me a perception check. Really? About right, yeah. The duality. <laughs> yeah. So, there's no failing ability checks. Remember that. Um, you look around yourself, and you are currently inside of a mountain range. Not terribly far from where you looked at the map and what you might be heading towards, though this is an incredibly large mountain range. Uh, the graying wildlands in and of themselves is a pretty large territory uh, spanning roughly 600 miles across and the mountain range spans about 300 miles at its furthest side and maybe around five or 600 miles total. So you have over 600 square miles of landscape that you might be inside of that could lead to where you are headed. <sighs> All right. And none of so. you bought a map of uh, the territory? Uh, did the we get one really from the uh, Slayer's Take? No, they have like a global map available. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. What are the odds that there's one in Willie's bag? <laughs> are you going to use your winner? What are the odds? Do it. Use it. Sure, I'll, I'll put it in chat. Do it. <laughs> Knowing Willie, probably like 40%. Redeem it, but 27. Yeah. Willie, there may be a map in your bag. Not supposed to go through the mail, but I can see through the mail. I'm that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. You peer through the roll. All of you are looking at Willie as he just takes the tube and rotates it around. All right, Willie, survival check. Oh. <laughs> Willie's bag is going to be the most OP thing in the game. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> A lot of it overlaps on top of themselves as you're trying to read it, so it's, it's difficult. <laughs> you're like, I think. Look around. You think you're in the Falket Alps. Okay. I'm going to cast. And if you would like, I will bring you all over to the map that he has wrapped up in his bag. But I'm only showing you two destinations. The Alps themselves and Uthodern. Nothing else, because he can't translate it that well. 
Oh no, okay, uh, he's gonna go with his gut instinct and cast uh, Far Step and just keep teleporting till he thinks he found it. Leaving the rest of us stranded on a mountain. So, <laughs> Willie, where do you think we're. Wait, what Did are you just doing? Teleport? Really? He's about to use Far Step and try to really. Oh, one minute play. of teleporting? Yeah. And just action bonus action as far as he can see. That's how he delivers most of his letters. Well, so we that's... just see a, him blink in and out of existence farther and farther away. Yeah. All right. Well, he just left us. I guess it's up to us now. <laughs> All right. Have some faith, Silren. I, I have a good feeling about it. Uh, he put us in the same plane as something known as a devourer, Mary. Well, we're all right, so stop your whining. Ugh. This time, we're all right. All right, then. <clears throat> Jimmy, I grab Jimmy by his backpack. Hold on, and I flex my wings and I go after Willie. <laughs> and so I have a he's going flying. off, too. So, as you are flying outdoors in, give me a survival check. And, Willie, roll me a survival check with advantage, but also roll me a d6, because there are complications when you just poof in and out into random places. Natural 20. 24. Nice, nice. Well, uh, Soren, can you turn into a, uh, an eagle again? I can. I can also commune with the surrounding What's going nature. on? Is it Christmas? Right? <laughs> so, Dorzen. As you fly up into the open air, you do see that there is a large bridge built out of stone that goes across one of these two sections of mountains. One mountain in particular seems to have been crushed downwards, the peak of it completely ripped off, and you see down inside of it that there are people moving around. It might be a city of some kind. However, as you're flying up that high, Willy, you teleport right in the middle of 16 guards. Oh, wow. And this I... is your last teleport, and they all boom, crush on top of you, pinning you to the ground. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Planar Postal Service. One of the dwarves lifts you up, and you see two elves holding blades on either side of your neck going, What do you think you're doing? Are you trying to infiltrate our city? Hey, yeah, are you coming here? Are you one of those attackers? Hmm? Plain old poster servant. Oh, he's going to start crying. <laughs> Dorsin, you uh, see Willy on the bridge with his hands like this, crying. <laughs> Can Dorsin see this? <sighs> It doesn't your flight only last a minute? Yeah, you need to go to the ground. Dorzen sees it. Uh, get as close to this bridge as I possibly can in that whatever time I left. Uh, not to your allies that are like 30 seconds of flight away from you. Can I just whistle to them and point? <laughs> sure. Whistle and point. And then... You land into one of the snow alps and start trudging forward. And as you do so, uh, Willie at the bridge, one of them is like, yeah, you're one of them, aren't you? You come here to attack us next. You thought the Dwendalians were going to go down easy. So now you come after me, eh? eh? Oi. I don't even know what you are. Dorsing, you say that? Yeah. The dwarf whistles loudly and Dorsing, with your passive, you hear the knocking of one, two, thirty bows. And you look at the wall. There are now 30 crossbows aimed at you. Uh, Dorzen, maybe not that we've been in this situation before. Good question. Yes, we uh, have, which is thankfully we have an out this time. It, it's going to take the other three of you, uh, or three, three. of you, um, if you're walking, like 15, 20 minutes to get there. Yeah, I was about to say, like, did we probably heard all the whistles, right? Because we heard Dorzen's whistle, then all of a sudden we just hear You another... have a stupid passive, so I'll say, sure, you do. We need... <sighs> looks like, looks, looks like they're in some trouble now. Mary? What? Use your swindling and help them. 
Swindling? I've never swindled down. Do I see any cracks in the ground? Um, We're with the take. The Slayer's take. We don't want any cake. <laughs> Not cake. Cake. My ass is fat as what? <laughs> <laughs> Will he hear this? Yeah, yeah. Slayer's Guild. Take. Slayer's. <laughs> you forget which one you're at. Shit. <laughs> Slayer. Wait. You're all a Slayer's take. Yes, uh, he, one of them has an emblem, I swear. Uh, uh, which one? <laughs> which one, boy? Mary, she's the leader. <laughs> Mary. All right. God. The dwarf steps away from you and begins walking out. Um, as he does so, doors, and you do notice he uses some like uh, military symbology to the other individuals. It says, hold ready arrows, release if I fall. Yeah. Uh, they're, they seem high strung right now. We stepped into something besides this contract, didn't we? He begins walking towards you. And after a couple of minutes, he gets there with Jimmy on your back. Wait, Jimmy, you did go with him, right? Uh, I grabbed Jimmy. Yeah. Okay. He looks at the two of you. All right. So which one of you is Mary? Uh, she's not. She's actually in Jimmy points back. Thorson pulls out his Slayer's Take necklace, which he always wears. His third necklace. Hey, all right, you take members. Good. Circles and Willy, the blades are relinquished from your throat. Yeah, misfire with teleportation. The other three are walking. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, we're uh, we just got some bad news. So uh, the kind of news that will interfere with our contract. I have no fucking idea what your contract is. You can talk to the folk in town. I don't fucking care about it. He walks past you and begins walking up the ridge. Um, as this happens, you do see um, there's one or two other individuals who ride out on Wolfback right up beside him. Very large, white-furred wolves. And uh, as the three of you crest over the peak of one of the mountains, you look down and you see the dwarf walking towards you and you see the beautiful large walls of Uthodurn before you. The one dwarf is walking up. Mary, which one of you is Mary? What? Are... Oh, it looks like your uh, reputation precedes you. Did we all? Uh, so we're all in the same group now. The three of you are. You're separated, but you're all catching up. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> um, that would be me. Uh, quick question out game though. Um, the dialect they're speaking here would that be the same or same sort of language as they do in Sadaj? No, no. The grain, okay. the grain wildlands are past the empire north. All right. So they are okay. the opposite end from Zadesh. Zadesh is okay. middle of the empire. Uh, the wildlands is far north. Yeah, also, I don't think that w grain wildlands are part of the empire. They are yeah. not. I'm just giving you a correlation. Okay. Uh, yes, that would be me. Um, hey, good. Nice to meet you. He sticks his hand out. Next time, oh, make sure yes, your uh, teleporter doesn't fuck up. We always want to speak to the leaders first. Right. Well, you see, we had a bit of uh, trouble uh, with our arrival, and he just wanted to scout ahead a little bit. Hey, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Come on. Right. Come on in. Uh, uh, it's a little I... chilly out here, and all of you are, like, uh, yes. cold. And after a day of no sensation, it's really weird being cold. <clears throat> Could I? Yeah, never mind. Um, so this is uh, Uthodurn, right? Yeah, hey, yeah, that's where you intended yes. to come, right? Uh, yes. yes. Hey. Oh, so how did you all uh, end up coming here, eh? Uh, well, you know, uh, magic. And, um, well, we're, we're with the um, Slayer's Take. Hey. Right. We've, um, uh, well, we've uh, taken on a contract regarding some winter wolves. Ah, uh, yeah, those things. They've been uh, causing us a little bit of a problem. Uh, we we had, um, we updated them like uh, two days ago, though. Um, 
right? It was was that update also the one including a an alpha wolf? Oh apparently? no, no, no! It's not an alpha wolf. Um, uh, wait, they didn't tell you. Mail oh. takes a while to get to the other side of the globe. Mm, that's weird. Right. Not uh, with magic. It's uh, yeah, we got a. Uh, Got a little uh issue happening right now. Um, it's uh right. apparently there's some uh abominable yetis setting up camp here. Ah uh, yeah, we heard about there might be some yetis, but we haven't really Oh it turns out there's a whole fucking clan of them. Oh, oh. shit. Uh fuck shit. And they are being openly hostile to you? Or? They set up a uh Operation somewhere in the mountain range. I'm not very sure. Uh, I'm on security detail for the city itself. But uh, yeah, they're using winter wolves as pets and trackers, and they're attacking us during our hunting, our uh, our distribution of uh, goods. They're killing people on the pathway. It's uh, it's getting pretty bad. Right. Well, so we've tried parlaying this... and mm -mm, nothing. Hmm. Go ahead, Sylvan. So. Uh, things change. I understand that. That's quite a big change. Who is the one he turns to the party that picked the contract? Oh, that was Mary. Mary, <laughs> Mary has Wait. the contract. No, no, picked it. Mary <laughs> picked the contract. <laughs> Sylvan doesn't say Ask anything, but job. you, but you, he, you know the look, the like the piercing stare he's giving you just I'm like that to it. i'm just ignoring it like everything else he says basically <laughs> most of the time <sighs> right well uh we're here to help so um would you mind we don't know too much about these yetis um i myself have not seen one before and, uh, I'm not going to be much help to you in the way of uh, that, at least. Um, uh, I can point you over to the proper people and authorities, though. All right, well, that would be helpful. Uh, yeah, no problem. Does our contract have a contact point of who sent it out? Mm -hmm. Um, oh, it, check it does. Um, mm -hmm. The contract point is to uh, Arbiter Batchwell Lighthammer. Batchwell Light Tamper. Right. Arbiter. You... Arbiter Batchwell Light Tamper. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, we should um, apparently um, talk to this uh, Arbiter Batchwell. Hey, yeah. Hey, and I uh, recommend no funny business. Uh, he just recently got appointed his position, and uh, Powder's gone a little bit to his, uh, his fucking balls. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I know. I. Yeah, it ha seems to happen to a lot of people. He looks again at Mary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any of you who, any of you know about politics, like character-wise, Fey <laughs> politics that counts. <laughs> Seren is particularly the way he is because of certain kind of politics. Bounty hunter kind of got to know what the laws nope. are. No, uh, it doesn't. Mm -mm. You would know the laws, but you don't know politics. Uh, I would know the basics of politics. Then. Socializing yeah. is the bard's thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, Silrin, I'll give it to you. Doors and Silrin and Mary. An arbiter is a judge with absolute authority. Hmm. Meaning their word, law, inside of this area. And societies so that'll... Arrested. A societies that will allow someone to be an arbiter inside of them treat their authority very, very respectfully. Well, um, you know what an arbiter is. <coughs> I don't imagine Fey have much use for arbiters. <laughs> they don't use, well, no, the leaders of each of the courts are arbiters. Oh, okay. yeah. They're just also Archfey Arbiters. Yeah. It's a term that some of them use to give themselves titles, but yeah, it means something more serious. Well, it means something slightly different. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes, right. I know what an orbiter is. And you're aware of the implications of that? I have some basic understanding to it. We Good. piss him off, he throws us in jail for life for sneezing. Yeah, so, once again, you have to be the one talking, Mary. Well, as it should be. Um... Don't push it. And don't get us executed. And if well, you are going to get I'm, us executed, not him, we're just so going to leave without you. Don't worry about that. <clears throat> Nor was I the one who brought on Hibbliss. Um Anyway, um, let's go. So, you continue following after this dwarven individual who uh, gets back over to the bridge, picks up Willy with all of you, and all of you then walk across this incredibly large bridge over to two hulking um, drawbridges that connect to the exterior of this imbued bridge itself. I know I'm using the same word, and it's frustrating me, but it is a drawbridge that connects to the actual bridge leading into the city. And as you step onto that and step across, they begin pulling the bridge door back up. Once you're inside, you do see that there's about 15 to 20 elves humans dwarves all adorned in the same militant armor looking fairly serious right now and up on the wall there are 30 archers uh all positioned up there with very nice looking crossbows and looking down on all of you just watching and being mindful a lot of guards right now what's going on it's uh the stress with the yetis you know yeah, it's uh, understandable. Uh, quick question, Jero. We had to go over bridges. What what exactly did the bridges go over? Like a big pit or cliff or something? Or like uh, a water? It, it's mountains, a, right? Yeah, it's a connected between two mountains, but what is beneath the bridge um, is mostly about 150 feet before rocks and snow. You would think that some of the bridges would be enough but I, f I get the feeling that these yetis are well, harder to deal with than expected. Well, yes, they're harder to deal with. They set up their fucking home inside of different mountains, and they're stopping us from trading to other locations. If they came after us, we'd take them down no problem. The problem is, traversing these mountains is difficult. Getting enough people into one area to be able to hunt, insert yourself into their territory, and then not falling into any of their traps or anything else. That's the difficulty of it. What kind of traps do they usually set up? Again, I'm not the one who does, does the details. I, right, right, you're right. going to want to talk to the Arbiter about that. Yes. All right. All righty. So you all continue moving through? Mm -hmm. um, is this guy like a guard that's escorting us as we're going there? Uh, he will be walking with you, yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, excuse me, I didn't quite catch your name. Um, I'm speaking to the guard. Ah. I'm a major bronze. Good to meet you. Yes, you too. Uh, I'm Amaryllis. Um, well, I said before. Um, I thought they said your name was Mary. Well, I, I, they call me Mary, you know. It's, uh, it's a bit shorter. Um, so you said he had sort of let the power go to his head a little bit? Hey, just a little bit. Uh, there... I keep your voice down about it in town. He, uh, you know how it is. He inherited the position from his father, got grandfathered in. Right. You know, the pompous yeah, asshole, there... fucking politics and shit. <laughs> I applied I for think. it, of course, but, you know, mm -hmm. apparently over 60 years of military service to this fucking town ain't good enough. Hmm. I know exactly what you mean. Um, well, um, is there anything specific we should be mindful of besides that? In and he's of... hoity-toity. Just be respectful and you should be fine. Right. Yeah, fair yeah, yeah. And don't, of course, you know, mention anything about him not earning his position. He doesn't like that. Put me on stable no, duty for not. two weeks. <laughs> right. 
Well, lead on then. Oh, continue. Stable duty uh, is very common punishment. <laughs> uh, you said his name was Major Bornz? Pont? Bronze. Bronze. B. Okay. Bronze. Bronze. Yes. Like the metal. Yes. Not to be confused with Lieutenant Silver or General Gold. Do any of you <laughs> speak Dwarvish as a language, actually? Because here's yes. a fun little thing. You do? Who? Yeah, I do. Mary. In Dwarvish culture, when people have two names from two different families, that's the union of two different groups together, two different clans together. That's why people are called Light Hammer, because the lights were born uh, potentially with a different uh, prefix or, or uh, yeah, suffix. suffix. And because they joined into one other family that was a larger family, they adapted the suffix into their name. Light is always the, uh, the prefix is always the smaller family that you are joining into. The suffix is always the greater family that you join into. And because his name is just bronze, that means his family has not had any outside influence with other groups. And considering his position, there's a, there is always politics into military positions and stuff like that. He, he has probably been like generationally birth into his position uh just a little bit of knowledge about the names so whenever you meet a dwarf you can analyze what that means about them uh as was still walking though too uh, <laughs> so i was gonna ask a couple things okay uh major bronze hey. as a dwarf with 60 years over 60 years of military experience uh yeah so other than the arbiter is there anyone we should talk to about who's maybe gone on expeditions out there and come back um all of that in, all of that information is mostly kept by the arbiter uh i've been appointed to the wall uh for its protection detail ever since all of this started um, um i believe there's a ass- shop in town uh somebody was going out to sell pastries um a lot of cupcakes and unfortunately only the owner came back alive so the owner would have first-hand knowledge, is aye. what you're saying. Aye, aye. Uh, uh, I can look into that if you need be, uh, in case he doesn't have that information about you. Just uh, look for me at the uh, the uh, the Cobalt Hold. It's a good little uh, bar, all right? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm writing my notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, yeah. you say Cobalt or Cobalt? Cobalt Hold. Uh, wait, sorry, so... Pastry shop owners for sad knowledge, and what he say to find him at the cobalt? Cobalt, like the color. Yeah. Find him at that tavern. It's a tavern. The cobalt hole. <clears throat> Fun fact: both cobalt and cobalt stem from the same word. Really? Which word is that? Yeah. Uh, cobalt. <laughs> it's from German uh, folklore, I believe. <laughs> oh, really? That's interesting. Were they originally blue? Abadi, abadi. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're supposed to be more rabbit like, I think, in appearance originally. Yeah. Anyway. Um, uh, well, uh, so if the pastry shop owner, uh, anyone with tracking experience, uh, military experience, who would have first hand knowledge we can talk to? Or is that also just all knowledge kept with the arbiter on that? We'll speak with the arbiter and take it from there, someone. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll look into whatever you want me to. Uh, any way I can help the uh, Slayers. I like to keep a good relationship with the Slayers whenever we actually need you to come out here. It's not very often, but when we do, we really need, uh, you know, people who are willing to die. Of course. Right. All right. Well, if, if it makes you feel any better, our previous task was taking out a uh, a blue dragon, a fairly large one at that. Not bad. I think we have a white one around here. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't fuck with to... it if I was you. No. Well, you know well, the age of it? A separate contract anyway, so. Uh, older than me. That's right. fair. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Go ahead. Um, as you are walking through the city, you are looking at all of the different shops and very lovely craftsmanship that goes into here this is a very old dwarven 
culture and society, you can tell. But a notable, interesting aspect about it, there is just as many elves here as there are dwarves. And humans are populating the streets, a couple of halflings and other choice people as well, but it seems equal parts elvish and dwarvish. Which, culturally speaking, for many of you where you come from, that's odd. Usually the two cultures are very separate. But looking at the architecture in the area, uh, it's definitely dwarvish architecture. Sturdy, no, beautiful, wonderful stonework. That goes into everything. Can I roll a history check on that? Uh, I'm also originally from Wildmount. So. Yes, so yes. Go for it. 30, 20. There was an incident maybe 40 years ago or so that you heard about where one of the elven cultures uh, were attacked and were almost run extinct. Uh, who survived ended up fleeing and Uthadurn opened up their city gates to protect them, give them uh, refugee. So the elves are refugees inside of Uthadurn. Right. Or they were 40 years ago or so. But then it just like slowly adapted with them? Yeah, yeah, you know. Once you coexist, you coexist. So... And as you are walking past, the Major does stop and snap his finger and point out a shop. There it is. The softer stone forge. The bakery right there. Hmm. That's the name of the bakery? The softer stone forge? That is correct. Okay. Uh, and Silverin, roll insight. Uh, yeah. So does that mean there's just a normal stone forge as well? If this was the softer one? And a harder one. <laughs> <laughs> you have also the hardest one? Ah, I'm married, unfortunately. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, I right. I, uh, I oil my beard. I do. Oh, it looks very nice. Thank you. It's for the messes, though. You nice can look, no touch. <laughs> yeah, uh... Before we forget, <laughs> we promised a friend to get a large a cask of ale from this part of the world. Oh. Do you know what we're just selling them? The good oh. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? Scratch meet me at the tavern. You can meet me by my family home. We'll see if we can hook you up with something, all right? Silver, and I'm whispering to you in answer. Okay. I very much appreciate that. Yeah, um, of course. No problem. Oh, Hedge, which is going to love the. Or no, not, not Hedge. Um. Is it edge? Is that river on the map supposed to be orange? There's uh, a river yeah, on the map that's orange? Yeah, no, in the top left. I think that's part of that one weird spot in Wild Map. Isle Cross, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's lava. <laughs> oh, wow. That's the no-no zone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if someone recommends you go there, your only response should be, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 Sorry, this is a little bit of a longer reply because 28 insight is actually really good for this situation. Oh wow! Uh, I mean, I was I was just trying to. Oh no, you're getting details. You, okay. you thought details, the yeah. Underdark was bad. Isocross. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. Underdark <laughs> looks like Candyland. Wait, seriously? Like Isocross That's is worse statement. than than? Wow, that is a statement. That's yeah. Oh, so yeah. Shut up, Siri. Like, like, I didn't read too far into it, but I, I knew it was just dangerous. It's, I didn't know it was that dangerous. Serious. I hate you. <laughs> to be fair, I almost fell backwards out of my chair for that one. What? <laughs> Carl almost got me on that. Oh, man. Too bad we, you didn't have a camera so we could see you almost fall off. <laughs> <laughs> The world uh, was like, no, 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 no. I mean, I guess while we're waiting, do we have any more questions for Major Bronze while he's here? There you go, Soren. I had a jelly one, but I'm not going to ask it. Oh. All right. But yeah, that's the bakery. I recommend that you stop in there. Uh, if you have a chance, try out all of their cupcakes. Honestly. Oh, whew, so good. So good. 
Uh, I get them every uh, every Sunday for the misses before we go home, you know? Uh, I get off my duty, and I have Mondays off. So I get her a nice baker's dozen, one for me, 12 for her. And uh, <laughs> we sit down with a nice bottle of uh, sherry, and uh, it's a beautiful fireplace. I'll, I'll show you all when we get there. It's good, it's good. Very romantic. Thank you, thank you. See? Uh, I like you people. I like you all. Ha <laughs> ha. And just keeps walking with you all. Uh, don't worry. You'll get to know us eventually. Then you'll hate us. Well, nah, you look like some sturdier folks, so I don't think I'll hate you that much. Not like that piss ant of an arbiter we got. <laughs> this is a cop. I was like, keep telling you. We can't <laughs> keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. But anyways, as you walk further and deeper into this area, eventually you notice that there is a large set of stoneworked stairs that are about 15 to 20 feet wide and at the largest, the smallest gap, about 20 feet tall from the surface going into the mountain. And you begin walking down these stairs. It immediately becomes darkened before you start seeing torch lights spread 20 feet apart all the way down here. As you are walking very carefully, he is the only person accompanying you, and you do see on the further left-hand side that there is somebody wearing uh, political clothing, uh, somebody who looks to be some type of uh, judge, maybe, um, who walks over and like walks past, and as they look at all of you, they hold their nose higher in the air and just keep walking. <laughs> Hey, right. stop trying to copy that. Hank goes, but I'm so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the first time Bronze heard Fang speak. What the fuck? Our dog talks. Hmm. He just stops and stares at Fang. Fang turns and goes, you may pet me. I am Sir Super Fang the Amazing. I'm a noble. It's true, I, I don't. I don't suppose uh, Sir Super Fang the Amazing is uh, for sale. No. No, but uh, for the right price, Silver can uh, make others talk. I keep this in mind. But anyway, since we've lost our second player, I think we will pick up the next session with all of you finding the. Uh, Judge's establishment to talk with him. Just, there's one thing I wanted to add, add to after Kuma said that. It's like, yes, I did notice that some of those big goats there could, look that you ride. Because if I remember correctly, Uthodon is a place where they have the big battle goats. and They do. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, We'll see how it goes next time, then. I hate you all Aww. so much. <laughs> but anyways, thank you, players, so much for playing. Fucking hell. Uh, thank you, viewers, for watching. I hope you all had a good time. Uh, welcome to Wild Mount, bitches. All right. See you all next time. <laughs> Woo.